Kingsmill, we're talking about the exponential growth of connections. Now, uh, here at Energy Media, we talk about the electrification of the supply side, wind and solar, we, the electrification of the demand side, heat pumps and, and electric vehicles. But you've added a third uh, category of connections. Maybe you could explain that. I think it's really important because, um, to state the obvious, you need something to connect your supply and demand. And one of the biggest problems that electricity has faced since it was um, invented or discovered um, was the fact that you can't store it. And it's very inflexible. And therefore, you have to balance you know, to the millisecond. So what has been going on over the last 10 years has been an incredible amount of innovation in solving that problem of the, of the connection of supply and demand. And um, so, you know, the, the classic example and the one that's most live, everyone's talking about right now is battery storage. And, you know, battery storage, folks, has been doubling every single year for the last five years, <laughs> doubling every year. It was like, you know, like the, the Chinaman and the rice and the um, and, and the chessboard. That's incredible. Um, and it's now bigger than the entire pumped hydro system that we built up over 150 years. So, um, yeah, so battery storage is 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 one aspect. Uh, another uh, aspect is the amount of um, new H HVDC lines that we've been building. It's a tenfold increase in the last decade. Uh, another aspect is all of the new software um, that we put into place, the so demand side management. The classic example here is uh, Octopus Energy in the UK, which in the course of two years built up a flexible resource of, you know, my car and other people's cars of, of 2,000 megawatts, which is the same as a nuclear power station. And it's basically free um, that they built up this by using clever software. Um, and then you've got these internet connected devices. Now there's over a billion internet connected uh, d device, uh, sorry, there's 20 billion internet connected devices and about a billion smart meters. So the point simply is that we've been doing hardware, software all over the system in order to make electricity essentially fungible. And, and it's a really important part of the story because if we hadn't had this, it would just be much harder to make the, to make the system run. Let's talk about some of the uh, business models that are arising. You mentioned Octopus Energy in the UK. And uh, what other kinds of business models uh, are, are emerging to do the connection? So um, the, the, there, are, uh, the, there are companies who are doing um, uh, uh, heat as a service, energy as a service. There's all kinds of clever companies, for example, in the, in the um, thermal storage business out there, uh, like Rondo. Um, then there are uh, g g companies which are, are setting up, you know, virtual power plants and, you know, uh, wandering around different factories and, and figuring out ways that they can uh, uh, turn their resources into a flexible resource and aggregating them into these virtual power plants. So, look, it's just a huge amount of innovation of, 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 of clever entrepreneurs going and making assets which were not valuable into valuable assets. Another classic example, again, from from Octopus, they signed this deal in the UK a few weeks ago with um, with BYD to, to, to turn... BYD's cars into a completely flexible resource. Uh, so again, if you take battery, the battery storage um, system, which is uh, around 200 uh, gigawatts right now, the the, the global cars are, are 10 times as big. So if you could add the entire car fleet into your um, into your flexibility, which ultimately will absolutely happen because it it it, it will be a waste of resources not to then you know you can dramatically increase the amount of flexibility you're getting so yeah different business models and and we you know we only scratch the surface of what could be done here because we've never had to think about this before and now we we can and we are oh sorry and then the final point we should make mention and i'm extremely remiss not to do this is ai this is a completely um strange narrative that ai is is, is somehow going to um make the energy transition harder because it, it it because of um demand for um the ai itself i mean this is com completely to miss the point AI is being used in order to make um, these very uh, uh, wide range of distributed resources flexible. So yeah, AI undoubtedly is going to add to uh, the speed of the transition. Um, earlier, you mentioned energy as a service business model, and I want to the, the um, just mention that because we're talking about 
the a company comes in, might be to a business, might be to like a school district, uh, is one interview I did. And they provide the capital for all of the solar panels, all of the batteries, all of the digital controls, and all the capital costs. So, uh, And then they make their money on the savings uh, uh, from that system. And what that does is it, it enables, you know, large uh, groups uh, to be able to uh, electrify uh, to, and you use distributed solar, distributed energy at literally no cost to themselves. And we're seeing that spread. Uh, do you think energy is a, as a service? You mentioned heat as a service. What's the potential there? Well, it, it's just the point is that, that what financial markets specialize in ultimately is converting um, CapEx into OpEx uh, or fixed costs into variable costs. And, and that's that's again it's always been a fake argument that there's not enough capital to make this um energy transition or too supposedly too expensive you know the market will find a way the market is finding a way to convert the lower long-term cost of renewables um and defray the initial capital costs so yeah it's 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 really significant I mean, it's, it's similar to the the famous innovation of general motors in the 1920s of of, of selling cars on higher purchase and that you know again just stimulates a much larger market because people can then defray the cost over 10 years rather than paying it all up front